Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and in this video, I will be going through the process of setting up a, this FDA benchmark. It's a benchmark of a nozzle. The goal is to try to predict blood damage, but in order to do that, we need to ensure that our computational fluid dynamics tool is accurate and is able to capture <clears throat> the flow features within this nozzle. So let's get started. I have this model created in Ansys Space Claim. We can make quick, some quick changes to ensure that we are we can set this up easily so I'm going to make it 200 millimeters downstream from the <clears throat> sudden expansion and I'm going to make sure that I have a little bit more uh, downstream path defined as well so this downstream path here will be 100 millimeters save this and we can go ahead and start Ansys AIM. This has been correlated with all of our flagship CFD tools such as CFX and Fluent, but I'm doing this in AIM because I wanted to show how easy it is to set up something like this in AIM. And it's always important to validate these models because with any computational fluid dynamics tool, it will always, almost always give you a result, but it may not be the right result. So because we have test data on this nozzle, from various laboratories, we can compare our results to see how accurate. And now we can select the type of simulation. This is a simple fluid flow analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and pick our fluid flow model. It's going to use the existing task, steady state simulation. You can see AIM walks you through all the different physics options here. This is not compressible. I'm not going to include the particles yet. I'm going to do a basic steady state analysis. Okay, now we can go ahead and set up the simulation here. Under the mesh setting, we have a number of options here. The key here is we want to define the boundary layers. Boundary layer allows us to define areas where the fluid will touch the wall. This creates a rapidly changing shear uh, velocity profile. And we want to ensure that we capture that. A a AIM, by default, uses the ANSYS SST turbulence model, which will resolve down to the wall if there's enough boundary layer resolution. The default is a tetrahedral element. Here, I'm going to switch this to hex mesh, because for this type of model, hex mesh is much more efficient in capturing the, the geometry and the flow behavior. ANSYS creates a hex mesh automatically. And we're going to go ahead and use this model for to push on with our analysis. The next step is physics. So we have a physics region which is already defined. We want to assign the materials. Instead of air here, I'm going to use uh, my New Newtonian blood model. Testing done at the FDA, they provided a series of test data here. You can see that the density here is 1056 and viscosity is defined the same way. We can implement a non-Newtonian model a little bit later to check the differences. Uh, once that's done here, the physics options allow us to change the turbulence model. We can, instead of that, I'm going to go directly to uh, the boundary conditions. So as we know, with computational fluid dynamics, we typically are most concerned with boundary conditions initial condition, and material properties. So the flow rate provided by the FDA is shown up here. So this is the volumetric flow rate. With computational fluid dynamics, we typically are more interested in the mass flow rate. So this will be defined as an expression and put it directly into this tab. So it's 3.644374. Uh, e to the minus 5. This has a unit of uh, meters cubed per second, so that's my volumetric rate, uh, flow rate. I multiply this by the density to get the uh, mass flow rate. Uh, the velocity is relatively slow, so I'm going to go with a low intensity flow here. On the other side, I'll put in my outlet. So the outlet here will set a gauge pressure of zero, allow uh, use pressure averaging so that it's not uniformly zero. 
at the outlet and we can allow some, for some reverse flows. This allows us to try to extend the outlet a little bit further. One key challenge with CFD is how far do you extend the inlet and outlet boundaries. So some of these features allow us to extend the boundary uh, a, little bit, a little bit further or cut it short in my simulation. The inlet ideally would be a fully developed uh, flow or maybe through measurement data we can get inlet predictions here. So let's go ahead and solve the simulation. So it's done. The convergence criteria for AIM is for all the res residuals to drop by five orders of magnitude. We've reached that. We can now take a look at some uh, flow behavior here. So I'm going to create a plane. And we're going to orient this plane such that the x-axis is, um, is the normal. And let's plot the velocity. You can see the, the flow profile. You can choose to turn on the mesh to see the mesh, the boundary layer mesh that's captured. It's also useful to check things like pressure. Uh, drop as well as the Y plus values. We can do all of that in a let's value the results here. So the, the one one set of test test data that's very useful is the uh, the axial velocity down the pipe. So we can get a chart of that. by creating a line chart. The line chart allows us to define a location. So I'm going to define a line directly in the line chart. The start point, create a new start point. Uh, the start point is at the inlet. So I'm going to change this to based on geometry. And the end point, we'll create a new one as well. This is also going to be based on the geometry, and it will be this location here. So that's my line. Once I have the line, we can plot any type of results on that line. So going back to my line chart, here, we can use this line and plot the velocity magnitude. And this creates this uh, profile here. I'm going to export this as a CSV file. And then compare it to the test data. So this is the test data from the, the testing that was done by the FDA. I am going to open up the file that I just saved. And this is a file uh, from the simulation results. They're a little bit offset. The zero location in the test data is at the sudden expansion. So at this point, uh, let's go back and offset this as well. So I'm going to move this over, have this equal to this mat value minus, um, I believe it's 200 millimeters. So I'll just copy this and paste it to the rest of the data. Copy this and move it over to compare with the test data. No, let's not paint special so the values come in. So you can see that we go to we have data all the way until it meets the sudden expansion, and then it expands down by 100 millimeters. So let's add this data to the series. Okay, so we have a pretty good fit. Let's make this a little bit bigger of the data. There's a little bit of a mismatch at the end here. Uh, 
uh, and also at the inlet. You can see that the, the velocity initially is slowly increasing, and even when it hits the, the nozzle, there's, there's a slight difference in the, the in initial conditions or the inlet conditions. Uh, if we have test data that measures the inlet conditions, we can probably get a much more accurate behavior. But it certainly pr predicts a sudden increase in velocity and then the drop uh, fairly accurately. Okay, that's the end for this presentation. In my next demonstration, I'll talk about how to make our simulation a little bit more accurate. Thank you.